Okay, well, I thought what I'd do right now is to do a um, unboxing of the Olatron, the 4060. Um, I actually, as you can see here, ended up purchasing two of these units. Um, Perfect Circuit had them on sale as part of the Black Friday, Cyber Monday events uh, for somewhere around $100, and they're normally $125 US. So this will show you what essentially you will receive if you purchase one of these units. So the first thing you'll note is that they come in this very cool uh, cylindrical container, not your typical shipping box for something like this. So um, when you open it up, you'll get a series of items and we'll go through each of these. Perhaps first we can take all the paper stuff out of here that's kind of tight to get get things out of this box okay yeah so the um, actual unit is here as you note um, probably familiar with what it looks like upside down there you can actually purchase I, I do recommend this so it takes a um, typical 9 volt adapter and I've noted that to I mean it's not a big deal there was one screw but I often find that if you are looking for convenience, I guess if you were using this in a, in a setup playing out somewhere where you didn't want to have to deal with a lot of power issues, this could be pretty handy actually to have. Um, I'm not going to do it for you, but you take the cover off and you just plug the 9-volt battery in. When you do that, just be sure to look at the orientation of the battery. You might have to, I can't recall, but you might have to flip it this way or this way in order for this um, case to close tightly. It's not the easiest thing, but that's why for me, I just picked up a Donner um, nine volt adapter. You can get those on Amazon or eBay and they're really, really cheap. So it, it might be a good option. But yeah, that's what the unit looks like. And one of the things that's very cool about the 4060 is the fact that it is so small and it does pack so much um, sound and CV sequencing potential in such a small, space. So the paperwork you get in here includes um, a couple of stickers here. So kind of cool if, you, if you're into stickers. The extensive instructions and this is actually pretty good I think for the unit. It's two pages but it's very detailed in terms of what the unit does and it has a lot of information about all the blocks here available for you and then you flip it over so this describes all of the various components that you get um, in the box that allows you essentially to create the sounds and control abilities for your modular that the 4060 is capable of doing the other thing you get is this um, patch sheet and so what you could do is photocopy this and then you could actually then uh, create all of your patches now, while I think having these patch sheets is a good idea, I also think it could be a challenging thing in terms of um, figuring out how to make this fit your setup that you're planning with the 4060. And as an example of this, and let me just get my, get my second camera going here so I could show you on my modular setup. So some time ago, I thought of doing something like this, creating a patch sheet for some of my modular units and essentially what I wanted to do was to say okay if I'm running a particular sound into one of my sound generators an oscillator and I'm modulating that with something like maths or uh, chance using some kind of gate or clock signals um, how can I recall this later and one of the things that is cool about modular is its sense of um, unpredictability and the generative sense of it you're building a patch from the ground up and because of that reason, as a strength, as a positive, it's sometimes very hard to reimagine that patch in the future. So if I, for example, diagrammed my envelope generator, and I could diagram the patch points coming out of it, and I could say it's going into a particular module, and that sound is being routed. I mean, with a Eurorack modular setup, you of course have multiple signals that are either controlling parameters of modules which would be a signal that is more controlling something. And then you also have audio signals that could be going to, into effects units or mixing uh, buses or whatever. Well, so it's not that easy what I'm trying to say to diagram this because even if I indicate the patch points where things are going, I can have a sense of 
the modulation and what's affecting what. But then I have to think about, in the case of envelopes, you know, where they're at in terms of my attack and my sustains. Or I have to think about other modules, um, levels, positions of pots or faders or whatever. So it's not that easy to do, which is kind of a good thing and a bad thing. So to come back then to our Olectron, I'm thinking while this is a good idea to create patches, when you get into your components, and these are essentially all the components that come with your Olectron, there is a absolute slew of these. If you take them out of the package, um, you have just about everything in here. And this is, by the way, I think one of the reasons that some of us find this unit to be so fun and, and interesting. It's because of the fact that you are generating something. Um, and this is one here I'll probably be featuring maybe at the end of this. I wanted to create a um, patch using some of the components that was almost like a, a fat drone was my attempt with this one. So I have this set up and I'm thinking at some point I may want to note what that patch is. So indeed I could use the patch sheet that's provided to us by Olectron. Or another way maybe you've done this is you take your phone and you simply would go ahead and um, take a photo of that and then what you do later is recall that photo. And I've done this with modular, I was just speaking of my, my modular setup, I've done this with modular before such that I can um, you know, take a screenshot of something on YouTube if someone has some modules that I also have in my Euro rack and then I can recall that and try to replicate that. And it's not the easiest thing to do but it's one possibility. But even in this setup, as you can see, with taking photos, I can tell, okay, this is going into the reset block as is that one, but it's not that easy necessarily to pinpoint even with a photo where everything is. And that's probably one disadvantage of the Olectron is that once you start patching things, you'll find it, it's very, very small to work with. You have to really be nimble, get your fingers in there and so forth, and hopefully um, can access everything you want to. They give you such a slew of components here, capacitors, resistors, LEDs. Uh, there are even LEDs with more than, which is, I think, really cool. You know, a lot of them have two prongs. This one has four prongs. There are some light sensors in here, so you could do some stuff with light. There are certainly many, many possibilities. But that being said, again, when you st start actually patching, it's really um, a small unit to work with. Now, one possibility, and I'm not promising I'll do this, but in the past, and let me go back to my other camera here so I can show you part of my um, Euro setup, but you might recall in the past I did a video, and, it, and you could search the YouTube channel to find it, and it's this particular device here, the Folk Tech, which in some ways, um, and this is called the Conduit, and I would say in some ways it replicates some of the setup of the 4060. So we have the breadboard cables and that allows you to take different points on the machine, on the, the unit, and route them. And also using the resist module, which is this one here, this also has the breadboard cables and you can use it to create drones, you can do things with the filter, you can do things with the delay unit, the Vactrals. It's a really diverse unit and like the Olectron 4060, I would say challenging to work with, and that's both a strength and a weakness with any of these that allow you for sonic possibilities. You have to really think about what you want to do with the unit and how you'll use it in terms of controlling it. So what I did, um, and again you can check out my video on this, is I took these Arduino cables, I essentially routed them into what I call a patch board. And so this patch board has every one of these points on these two modules routed using stainless steel screws in the back and soldered the um, Arduino cable patch points. And then what I did was I created, I replicated blocks here that essentially replicate those here. So this is your oscillator block with all the points and that's up here. And so the idea is instead of fumbling with really small cables and patch points and it's just like the 4060, not that easy to work with, with uh, your fingers. This will allow me to do that using alligator clips. Now it's a ton of work to create something like this so I thought for a moment and I may not actually do this 
go back to our main camera, I thought, well, could I do that with this? Could I take all these patch points and create a similar patch board? I could certainly take my longer versions of the Arduino cables, hook these in, but then it would get, I think, really, I'm trying to get that cable in there, really messy, right? All these cables in all these various blocks would be coming out of the unit. Um, it would make it almost unwieldy to work with. And then it wouldn't really just be like with the folk tech about the cables themselves. Because we have all of these components to work with, I would somehow have to create a possibility of um, connecting these with other components or other cables on that patch board. So I, I don't think that ne that necessarily will be very practical. So it leads me to believe I just have to deal with the fact that it's hard to patch um, the various components into these very, very small units. And that's just the nature of the game if you do a lot of stuff with DIY with Arduino in terms of the challenges of getting your hands in and patching the various components. Now one thing you could do actually is you could use some alligator cables as part of this setup. So I could, if I wanted, um, take a patch point and just clip that to that and I could um, use this if I wanted in an external sense to the, the 4060. I could get a switch, for example, an on-off switch, and essentially I could just patch that to one of those breadboard cables and patch it into the Olectron, and I could do some glitch stuff if I wanted. And I've used some of this technique in some of my homemade instruments where a simple on-off switch, depending on the type you get, will allow you to create, a, say, a glitch effect from um, your, a typical audio output from a, like a homemade percussion spring instrument, something of that nature. So that might be a possibility, um, short of trying to create an entirely external patch board. Now the other thing I think that could be useful for us to think about is when you get all these um, components, of course, you might have to go to the instruction manual. If you're not an electronics person, and I am not, you might spend some time just trying to figure out what is what in terms of all the components. Um, if you're not an electronics person, uh, obviously it, it takes some knowledge of what's going on with these components. You have to differentiate one from another. Um, they have different, what would you call this? Um, not impedance levels, but um, different levels of affecting the circuit that is happening in the 4060. So, you know, the size of it, and they've done some color coding, all of this obviously will affect your final um, experiment that you're, you're conducting on the 4060. One of the things I decided to do is to pick up some of these uh, very cheap, craft boxes and I might have to use two of these again I have double the the components with two of the units maybe I'll use two of these and then this way I can organize them by type by color and then when I want to start a patch from scratch I'll just open up the box I will take the components I want and I will uh, place them on the 4060 kind of like what I did with this one last night again I hope to uh, share this in this video with you because I feel that experimenting with individual components, whether they're the um, LED lights or resistors and capacitors, um, patching in the cables and so forth, allows you to create something sonically that, for me at least, feels um, very organic and interesting. And um, it really does suggest to me the idea of a world of, of sonic possibility.